on US earnings. And what else, what else is going on on global markets at the moment? Let's get the view of Peter Maguire from XM. Pete, good to catch up with you. Now, uh, you're actually on the move. Where are you at the moment? Good morning, Andrew. Uh, I'm in Dubai. It's about six o'clock in the morning, so it's nice to meet you and greet you. And uh, the sun's just about to start to rise. All right. Well, um, no doubt you're, you've been hearing about uh, the oil market. We'll get to that in just a moment. Let's though start in the States. Uh, with earnings season, well, really gets off a uh, tomorrow morning, doesn't it? With um, the big banks, what are the expectations there? Well, they've underperformed, Andrew. In '23, you got Wells, uh, naturally Citigroup, and J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan's been the best of the bunch, and it's a little bit blurry as far as Wells Fargo is concerned. Citigroup, um, you know, it's going to be another tough um, earnings season for them. So we've just got to see how those numbers drop and, you know, moving forward, uh, how the market interprets it. We understand, you know, as far as interest rates and uh, margins earned. And it's whilst it's good for banks with relatively high interest rates, it does get to a point, Andrew, that um, it, it does impact earnings if they move much higher. So that's another consideration. And, you know, we're worrying about defaults as well from U.S. consumers. So, yeah, I think they've got their hands full over the next quarter. Okay, so just see the underperformance there. Let's take a look at the valuations then. I think we've got the next chart. Um, talk us what you're through, seeing here. Well, you're worrying about it. Naturally, if you're looking at that price point as far as price earnings, you're seeing, you know, and the chart tells a story, how they're looking from 20 moving forward to 23. It's been really downward pressure all the way through. So is that going to continue into 24 with higher interest rates or that continuing as far as Fed policy higher for longer? And where are we? Is it a cheap point in time, Andrew? If you look back in, you know, in five years' time, is this the time to buy, considering compressed values, or is it, you know, we're we going to see further downside? So, um, you know, people are sitting on the sidelines trying to analyse the numbers and then come up with the best strategy moving forward. All right. Okay. So, all will be revealed tomorrow morning when we get uh, three or four of the big banks. Pete, let's move to oil. Um, you're saying you're in Dubai. I gather you've had a briefing, in fact, uh, from OPEC. Um, so I'm interested to, to hear what you heard. Yeah, I was in Fajar, Andrew, for um, the energy conference and the Secretary General from OPEC um, pre presented to, uh, uh, to, the, uh, to the symposium. It was very interesting because as far as long-term earnings or long-term long forecasts, he, there was um, out to 2020, uh, 2045, they're saying it'll be around about 116 million plus barrels a day as far as consumption. As you can imagine, there are differing views of the International Energy Agency, different, um, different forecasts moving forwards. But we look at, you know, projections as far as consumption, naturally, uh, you know, large uptick as far as population. And really, the mobility of youth is going to really play into that as well as electricity and, and other forms of energy. So I, I think where we're sitting at the moment there's no doubt going to be stronger pricing and it's still well off where we were in 2008, 2009 levels. And uh, well, I think we've just got to get used to these sort of prices moving forward. Naturally, uh, it's just going to be, a, you know, we're addicted to crude oil and that's not changing at all. Yeah. Now, Peter, of course, we did have that uh, key CPI read out of the States uh, for September overnight. Uh, we saw, as a consequence, um, slightly higher than expected, particularly at the headline level. Uh, we did see those Treasury yields take off again, along with the US dollar. Yeah. What are you seeing with the US dollar at the moment, the current trajectory? Well, it's back at around about 106.5, Andrew. So it's had a really nice rally to the upside again. You know, it's just continuing that push up. We saw it back off a little bit over last week, but it's regained some of that strength. And you're noticing currencies like ours are being crushed. So possibly you're going to be looking at 107 very shortly. I'd say very much you know, chance of that this month. So US dollar stronger impact as far as uh, yen and as it edges closer to 150, where are we as far as intervention from central banks? And the overall theme, I think, is just um, we're waiting to see how the Fed plays early November and what their thoughts are as far as these higher in, uh, inflation costs and inflation numbers, and are they going to see a rate rise? It's about a 28% probability at the moment, but uh, I think many traders are realising that it could well be the case. 
and Pete, expectations, the Aussie dollar thus is going to continue to come under pressure? I think so, Andrew. I mean, you know, there's every chance at 63.2. Uh, we're going to see a 62 handle sometime next week. I won't be surprised for it because I think there's just overall move to the upside as far as in strengthening of that US dollar. And let's round it out, Pete, with gold. We've spoken about this before, of course, has done very well just of late, of course, also off the back of those uh, horrific events out of the Middle East with uh, geopolitical tensions rising and uh, therefore we saw that, that flight to safety. How are you looking at gold at the moment? Well, it's still at 1885, Andrew. It's had a nice run up this week considering, you know, and over the last two weeks from those lows, but, uh, you know, yet to break into that 1900, we've had a very strong US dollars we're mindful of. So all of those moving parts need to be considered and possibly there's further upside there as far as, uh, you know, momentum, and I wouldn't be surprised to take 1,900 out sometime next week. We've just got to see, uh, you know, if it can continue with this rally. And it's been certainly a very nice market to trade over the last couple of days. So I think that that will possibly continue.